welcome everyone it's sunday and we are back with the remaining half of book 1 of paradise lost the first half we read out last week to our newcomers this is a program held by test reading club under the guidance of dr kalyani walak our beloved teacher with an aim to promote the reading of primary texts we read out classics every sunday at 2 pm if you wish to join and read along just leave us a message and we will be very happy to add you to our club as students of literature it's a wonderful and amazing experience to have first hand information and first hand knowledge about the work it helps us to understand and analyze the author and his work in a better way so without any further delay let us begin nor content with such audacious neighborhood the wisest heart of solomon he led by fraud to build his temple right against the temple of god on that opprobrious hill and made his grove the pleasant valley of hinnom tophet tents and black gehna call the type of hell next chemos the obscene dread of mobs sons from a road to nebo and the wild of southmost abaram in hesiban and horone sion's rim beyond the flary dale of sibma clad with wines and elail to the asphaltic pool pior his other name when he incited israel in sitium on their march from nile to do his wanton rites which caused them woe yet thence his lustful orgies he enlarged even to that hill of scandal by the grove of maloch homicide lust hard by hate till good joshia drove them thence to hell with these came they who from the bordering flood of old euphrates to the brook that parted egypt from syrian ground had general names of balaam and astaroth those male these feminine for spirits when they please can either sex assume or both so soft and uncompounded is their essence pure not tied or manacled with joint or limb nor founded on the brittle strength of bones like cumbrous flesh but in what shape they choose dilated or condensed bright or obscure can execute their airy purposes and works of love or enmity fulfill for those the race of israel oft forsook their living strength and unfrequented left his righteous altar bowing lowly down to be still gods for which their heads as low bow down in battle sunk before the spear of despicable foes with these in troop came astaroth whom the phoenicians called astarte queen of heaven with crescent horns to whose bright image nightly by the moon sidonian was in paid by their bows and thongs in sion also not unsung where stood her temple on the offensive mountain built by that unrocious king whose heart do large beguiled by fair idolatrous fell to idols fall thamus came next behind whose annual wound is leaden alloy the siren dames close to lament his fate in amorous ditties all a summer day by smooth adonis from his native rock ran purple to the sea supposed with blood of thamus yearly wounded the love tale infected sion's daughter with like heat whose went in passions in the sacred pool physical saw when by the vision led his eye surveyed the dark idolatry of alienated jura next came one who mourned in earnest when the captive ark named is root image head and hands looped off in his own temple on the ground for act fair he fla- fell flat and shamed his worshipers dagon his name sea monster upward man and downward fish it had his temple high reared in azores dreaded through the coast of palestine in gath and ascalon and acheron and gath's frontier bounds him followed rimon whose delightful seat 
was fair Damascus on the fertile banks. On Abana and Farfar, Lucy streams. He also against the house of God was bold, a leper once he lost and gained a king, Ahaz, his, his sortish conqueror, whom he drew God's altar to disparage and displace for one of Syrian mode, whereon the bur to burn his odious offering and adore the gods, whom he had vanquished. After this appeared a crew who under names of old Yunon, Orisis, Isis, Horus, and their train. With monsters, shapes, and sources abused, fanatic Egypt and her priests to seek their wandering gods disguised in brutish forms. Rather than human, nor did Israel escape the infection when they borrowed gold composed the calf in Arab, and the re rebel king doubled that sin in Bethel and in Dale, likening his master, his maker, to the gazed ox, Jehovah, who in one night, when he passed from Egypt marching, equaled with one stroke both her firstborn and all her bleating gods. Belial came last, than whom a spirit more lived, fell not from heaven or more gross to love wise for itself. To him no temple stood or altar smoked, yet who more oft than he in temples and at altars when the priest turns atheist as did Eli's sons who filled with lust and violence of violence the house of God. In courts and palaces he also reigns and in luxurious cities where the noise of riot ascends before their loftiest towers, towers and injury and outrage and when night darkens the streets then wander forth the suns. Of Belial flown with insolence and wine, witness the streets of Sodom and at night in Gibah, when the hospitable door exposed a matron to avoid worse rape. These were the prime in order and in might. The rest were long to tell, though far renowned, the Indians' gods of Javan's issue held gods. It confessed later than heaven and earth, their boasted parents, Titans, heaven's firstborn. With this enormous brood and birthright size by younger Satan, he from mightier Joe, his own and raised son, like measure found. So Joe, a spring reigned these first in Crete, and Ida known thence on the snowy top of cold Olympus ruled the middle air, their highest heaven, or on the Delphian cliff, or in Dodona, and through all the bounds of Doric land, or who with Satan old fled with Adria to the Hesperian fields. And o'er the Celtic roamed the utmost isles. All these and more came flocking, but with looks downcast and damp, yet such wherein appeared, obscure some glimpse of joy to have found their chief, not in despair to have found themselves not lost, in loss itself, which on his countenance cast like doubtful hue, but he his wanted pride, Soon recollecting with high words that both semblance of birth, not substance, gently raised their fainting courage and dispelled their fears. Then a straight commands that at the warlike sound of trumpets loud and clarions be upreared. His mighty standard that proud honor claimed 
is as well as his right, a cherub tall, who forthwith from the glittering staff unfold the imperial ensign, which full high advanced, sown like a meteor streaming to the wind, with gems and golden luster rich emblazed. Seraphic arms and trophies, all the while sonorous metal blowing martial sounds. At which the universal host upsent a shout that tore hell, hell's gun gave and beyond, frighted the reign of chaos and old night. All in a moment through the gloom were seen, ten thousand banners rise into the air, with orient colors waving with them rose, a forest huge of spears with thronging hems appeared, and serried shields in thick array. Of depth immeasurable, anon they move in perfect phalanx to the Dorian mode. Of flutes and soft recorders, such as raised to height of noblest temper heroes old, arming to battle and instead of rage, deliberate valor breathed firm and unmoved with dread of death to flight or foul retreat, nor wanting power to mitigate and sweat with solemn touches, troubled thoughts and chase, anguish and doubt and fear and sorrow and pain from mortal or immortal mind. Thus the breathing united force with fixed thoughts moved on in silence to soft pipes that charmed their painful steps over the burnt soil and now advanced in view. They stand a horrid front of dreadful length and dazzling arms in guise of warriors, all with ordered spear and shield, awaiting that what command their mighty chief had to impose. He, through the armed flies, darts his experienced eye and soon traverses the whole battalion views, their order due, their visages and stature as of gods, their number last he sums, and now his heart distends with pride and hardening in his strength glories. For never since created man met such embodied foes as named with these could merit more than that small infantry. Ward on by cranes, though all the giant brood of Phylegra with the heroic race were joined, that fought at Thebes and Ilium on each side, mixed with auxiliary gods, and what resounds in fable or romance of Uther's son. In fable or romance of Uther's son, beget with B British and harmonic knights, and all who since baptized or infidel, jousted as jousted in Aspramant or Montalban, Damasco or Morocco or Trebizond, or whom Bizarda sent from Africa shore when Chalmagni, with all his peerage, fell by Fontarabia. Thus far, thus far, these beyond compare of mortal prowess, yet observed their dread commander, he above the rest in shape and gesture proudly eminent, stood like a tower. His form had yet not lost all her original brightness, nor appeared less than Archangel, ruined and the excess of glory obscured, as when the sun new risen looks through the horizontal misty air, shone of his beams or from behind the moon in dim eclipse, disastrous twilight sheds on half the nations and with fear of change, perplexes monarch, darkened so yet shone above them all the archangel but his face. Deep scars of thunder had entranced, and care sat on his faded cheek, but under brows of dauntless courage and considerate pride, waiting ravens, cruel his eyes but cast, signs of remorse and passion to behold, the fellows of his crime, the followers rather, far other ones beheld in bliss, condemned forever now to have their lot.
forever now to have the lord in pain millions of spirits for his fault emerged of heaven and from eternal friendless sprung for his revolt yet faithful how they stood their glory withered as when heaven's fire hath scatched the forest oak on mountain pines with sign top their stately growth to bear stands on the blasted heath he now prepared to speak Whereat the double ranks they bent from wing to wing and half enclose him round with all his peer. Attention, held the mute. Thrice he essayed and thrice in spite of scorn, tears such as angels weep burst forth at last. Words interwove with sighs found out their way. O myriad of immortal spirits, O powers matchless, but with Almighty. and that a strife was not inglorious though the event was dire as this place testifies and this dire change hateful to utter but what power of mind for seeing or presaging from the depths of knowledge past or present could have feared how such united force of god how such as stood like these could ever know repulse for who can yet believe though after loss that all these pushient legions whose exile hath impeded heaven shall fail to descend self raised and reposes their native seat for me be witness all the host of heaven if counsel different or danger shunned by me have lost our hopes but he who reigns monarch in heaven till then as one secure sat in his throne upheld by old repute consent or custom and his regal state put forth at full but still his strength concealed which tempted our attempt and wrought our fall henceforth his might we know and know our own so as not either to provoke or dread new war provoke our better part remains to work in close design by fraud or guile what force affected not that he no less at length from us may find who overcomes by force hath overcome but half his foe space may produce new walls where of so rife there went a fame in heaven that he ere long intend to create and there in plant a generation whom his choice regard should favor equal to the sons of heaven thither if but to pry shall be perhaps our first eruption thither or elsewhere for this infernal pit shall never hold celestial spirits in bondage nor the abyss long under darkness cover but these thoughts full counsel must mature peace is despair for who can think submission war than war open or understood must be resolved open or understood must be resolved he spake and to confirm his words out flew millions of flaming swords drawn from the thighs of mighty cherubim the sudden blaze for round illumined hell are highly they raged against the highest and fires with grasped arms clashed on their sounding shields the din of war hurling defiance toward the vault of heaven there stood a hill not far whose grisly top belch fire and rolling smoke the rest entire shone with a glossy scarf undoubted sign that in his womb was heat metallic core the work of sulfur thither winged with speed on numerous brigade hastened as when bands of pioneers with spade and pickaxe armed for on the royal camp to trench of field or cast a rampart mammon led them on mammon the list erected spirit that fell from heaven for even in heaven his looks and thoughts were always downward bent admiring more the riches of heaven's payment prod and gold than out divine or holy else enjoyed in vision beautified by him first men also and by his suggestion thought ransacked the center and with impious hands refilled the bowels of their mother earth for treasures better hid 
soon had his pew opened into the hill a spacious wound and digged out ribs of gold let none admire that riches grow in hell that soil may best deserve the precious bane and here let those who boast in mortal things and wondering tell of babel and the works of memphian kings learn how their greatest monuments of fame and strength and art are easily outdone by spirits rib reprobate and in an hour what in an age they they with incident incessant toil and hands innumerable scars perform nay on the plain in many cells prepared that underneath had veins of liquid fire sluice from the lake a second multitude but wondrous art founded the massy ore severing each kind and scummed the bullion's dross a third as soon had formed within the ground a various mold and from the boiling cells by strange convenience filled each hollow nook as in an organ from one blast of wind to many a row of pipes the sound boarded breaks and none out of the earth a fabric huge rose like an exhalation with a sound of dulcet symphonies and voice the street built like a temple where pilasters round were set and doric pillars overlaid with golden architrave nor did there want cornice nor fierce with bossy sculptures graven the roof were fretted gold not babylon nor great alcario such magnificence equaled in all their glories to enshrine bulls or seraphis their gods or seat their kings when egypt with asria strove in wealth and luxury the ascending pile soon fixed her stately heights and straight the doors opening their brazen folds discover wide within her ample spaces over the smooth and level pavement from the arch roofs pendent by subtle magic many a row of starry lamps and blazing cressets sped with naptha and asphaltus yielded light as from a sky the hasty multitude admiring entered and the work some praise and some the architect his hand was known in heaven by many a towered structure high where sculptured angels held their residence and sat as princes whom the supreme king exalted to such power and gave to rule each in his hierarchy the orders bright nor was his name unheard or unadored in ancient greece and in ausonian land men call him mulciber and how he fell from heaven they fable thrown by angry jove sheer over the crystal battlements from morn to noon he fell from noon to dewy eve a summer's day and with the setting sun dropped from the zenith like a falling star o oh, lemnus the aegean isle thus they relate erring for he with his rebellious doubt fell along before nor aught availed him now to have built in heaven high towers nor did he escape by all his engines but was headlong sent with his industrious crew to build in hell meanwhile the winged herald by command of sovereign par with awful ceremony and trumpet sound throughout the host proclaim of solemn council forthwith to be held at pandemonium the high capital of satan and his peers their summons called from every band and squared regiment by place or choice the worthiest they annon with hundreds and with thousands trooping came attended all access was thrown the gates and porches wide but chief the spacious hall though like a covered field where champions bold went ride in armed and at the solden chair defied the best of pain and chivalry to mortal combat or career with lance thick swarmed both on the ground and in the air brushed with the hiss of rustling wings 
as bees in springtime when the sun with Taurus rides pour forth their populous youth about the hive. In clusters, they among fresh dews and flowers fly to and fro, or on the smooth plank, the suburb of their strawbule citadel, new rubbed with balm, expatiate and confer their state affairs. To thick the airy crowd swarmed and were straightened till the signal given. Behold a wonder, they but now who seemed in bigness to surpass earth's giant suns, now less than small dwarfs in narrow room, throng numberless like the pygmian race. Beyond the Indian mount or fairy elves, whose midnight reveals by a forest side or fountain some belated present sees or dreams he sees while overhead the moon sits arbitrous and nearer to the earth wheels her pale course day on their myth and dance intent with Japan music charm his ear at once with joy and fear his heart rebounds. Thus incorporeal spirits to smallest forms reduce their shapes in men's and where at large, though without number still amidst the hall of that infernal court, but for within and in their own dimensions like themselves, the great seraphic lords and cherubim in close recess, recess and secret conclave sat a thousand demigods on golden seats, frequent and full, after short silence then, and summons read, and the great consult begun. That's the end of book one. I thank you all for being with us. And from all of my teammates, I would like to inform that we belong from different parts of the country. So sometimes we may have or we have network issues. We are sorry for it and we are all learners. We are trying to get better every single day. So all of your valuable suggestions will be highly appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and watch out all the previous videos and also MAM's videos. Thank you one and all. Bye-bye. Have a nice day.